Hey. What's up, man? Who are you? I'm low qual. Yeah, but which low qual? Is that really what you want to ask right now? Good point. Why are you naked? Because the stage is set. The lines have been drawn. What? We know who plays who. And if you don't know who I am, I maintain competitive advantage. What kind of competitive advantage? Immunity to anything you say to me. You can't knock me off my game. My confidence has never been higher. Awfully cold in here, huh? Maybe. Yeah. You, uh... You enjoy your confidence. <laughs> hey. Hey. It's always cold on the ice, brother. Stay confident. Okay. This is the weirdest fucking shit. Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. That is not a dub. Not right. Well, they handed us another stinker, at least for 40 minutes. God, that was abysmal. That was that was not fun to watch again. The thing is, once I'd be like, okay, that was a bad game. Twice. No, you're gonna be disappointed in me. Immediately you're like, oh, is he actually gonna is he actually gonna criticize? No. Twice is, they don't care, man. They don't care who they play in the first round. They don't care about the division title. They don't, which is fine. That's not like an insult like, the, the Bruins don't care. No. They didn't care who they met in the first round. We get Toronto now. But they weren't willing to risk injury and play full speed. And yeah, the third period came around and they kicked it in the pants a little bit, which is fun to watch. But we escaped that game without any major injuries. The Carlo injury that happened last game uh, they're saying is just maintenance. They were just held him out of this one for precautionary reasons. Fine. Fine. Yes. The Panthers now have home ice if we meet them in the playoffs. Why do we care? I hate to be like, none of it matters, but none of it matters. It really doesn't. It just doesn't. I am annoyed that I just watched crap hockey for most of that game. That wasn't super fun for the second day in a row. So that's kind of annoying. You can be annoyed that we talked about process over results for the final few games. and The process for the last two games was awful. It was just so blatant, though. It was so blatant that they were playing at half speed that it's... I just don't understand the amount of people... If you're one of these people, dude, I don't get it. The ones who go, oh, well, we're playing for a first-round sweep, where this is a, this is exactly why we're going to lose. How do you put so much stock into the final two games of the season when, historically speaking, go back, look at all of the ways these cup champions or conference champions or whatever, however they ended the season. The last few games, however they played during them, doesn't matter. Because there's all sorts of different jockeying and how much teams care and all that good stuff. It just doesn't reflect how they're going to play in the first round unless it's a larger sample size. If you're talking 20 games up until squeaking into the first round, yeah, your odds probably don't look great. But if it's the last two or three games of the season where you already had your playoff spot locked up and your potential two different opponents are basically the same thing, I, I mean, in difficulty level, they're, they're different teams built very differently. But you, you basically were like, hey, do you want to face a high-powered offense with poor defense? Or do you want to pay, play a really good defense with not a great offense outside of one guy who is going nuclear on the entire league? And might be the second player this season to hit 100 assists in one season, which McDavid just did, which is nuts. It might have already happened. I don't know. I'm not watching the lightning until I have to. You can't force me. I, why are we Why are we putting so much stock? 82 games. The last two games are the only ones that matter. Like, just fucking relax. I, I, come on. We can't live and die by every result. And you can be worried about certain stuff. And I get it. I'm not ragging on you. But you also have to understand... That at the elite level of play, if you're not motivated for that game and you could say what you want to about that, 
But if it doesn't matter, you're not going to look good against other elite athletes that give a crap about that game. You're just not going to. And you know what? When they when they turned it on in the third period, I don't know why I just spit everywhere. When they turned it on in the third period, they were dummying the Senators, and uh, Forsberg just shut them down, which great goaltending. Take what you will out of it, but don't take your enjoyment out of playoff hockey. Get excited for it. This is it was you were gonna be worried no matter what we had. Anybody if we had Tampa, you were still gonna be sitting there going, "Oh, Vasilevsky, oh, they've had our number in the past." Oh. And now we have Toronto. Oh, we swept them in the season series. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That's they're still a scary team. And you're right, it doesn't matter. The season series sweep doesn't matter. But I do already see Toronto fans blaming the refs. Puck hasn't even dropped for game one. They're blaming the refs. Talk about historically they don't get the calls against the Bruins. Go back and look at it. That's not true. That's not even true. Do you remember Game 7 in 2019 where they didn't get called for anything? The whole game? Sure, they got smoked, but not a single penalty. Anyway, the Leafs are going to be the Leafs. A seven-game series sounds awful. I don't want to. I have said this for a long time. Past few years, actually. If the Leafs manage to beat us in a playoff series, it feels like that's the thing. That like that's the monkey off the back. If they defeat us in a playoff series, they could go all the way. That could be the trigger for it all. Is that putting too much onus on us and too much pride? Absolutely. Because I'm a proud Bruins fan. And and stop me if you heard this one before, but fuck the Leafs. So we're going to get a first round matchup that some people would have wanted and some people didn't want. The Leafs are good. They're a good opponent. We're not going to be heavily favored in the series. We're not going to be heavily favored in any series. And last year, we were the heaviest favored, and it blew up. I'm just glad we're healthy-ish. Healthy-ish. That's it. That's it. Let's talk about some things before we talk about the game. Jack Edwards, 19 seasons, 19 years as the voice of the Bruins. A legend. And no matter how you feel about the last year or two of his performance, you have to respect what he's done as a Bruins commentator and as part of this franchise. I have been watching Jack Edwards announce games almost my entire fanhood. Almost. I mean, he he started 19 years ago, was 2005-ish, and I was like 12 at that point. So, the large majority of my fanhood. He's a legend. He'll always be a legend. I, I wish he watched this channel once in a while just so he could hear me say, you're a legend, dude. You really are. Um, and you're going to be missed. And let people say whatever they want to say, but you have such an unbelievable highlight reel of calls and expressions and metaphors that isn't going to be matched by most, most in your field. It's just not going to be. An incredible career, and you can hang your hat on that. It's good stuff, and we're going to miss him. We are. There's no way around it, and you got to respect it. Ugh. I didn't think this would, like, affect me emotionally, but it does. It hits. It does hit. It really does. Oh, and for what it's worth, the biggest compliment I could ever give Jack Edwards is he always got excited about the hockey. If the other team scored, he showed them the same respect. Was he a homer? Absolutely. Have you listened to to other commentators. I have no idea where this thing where like Jack became the ultimate homer commentator. Listen around the league. Some of them not only are horrible homers to the point where they won't even talk about the play of the other team for the entire broadcast, but they're boring as hell too. Jack got excited about the hockey being played, not just the Bruins. And that brought you into the whole game. And that mattered. Homer, absolutely. Biased, absolutely. He did his best to stay in the middle. Guess what? He wasn't always there. But he got excited about the hockey. And I appreciate him for that. Another thing to point out is Trent Frederick, controversially, won the seventh player of the year award. Good for him. I think it should have been Danton Heinen. I think it should have been Danton Heinen in a landslide. But we'll go further into that in the Short Shift podcast that we're recording tomorrow night. should come out Thursday. So that's I'm not going to do 
12 minutes on that. This video is already, we haven't even started talking about the game, and this video is like 10 minutes already. The low quality bracket challenge is listed below. We're already up to like 60 something members. I assume that's going to go even higher as we get closer to the playoffs, and we are doing a bunch of preview videos as well. We'll get there. Uh, and also, I want to give myself a pat on the back. The Detroit Red Wings have been eliminated from the playoffs on the last day of their regular season. That is a prediction I made seven months ago. Good job, Low Qual. Don't look at my other predictions, but that one, uh, feel real good about it. Let's talk about this Ottawa team. The Ottawa season was, and I wanna, I wanna put this as gently as possible. The Ottawa season was a shit sandwich. And that shit sandwich, in the middle of this shit, and the bread was also made of shit. Because before the season even starts, you have the gambling, whatever really happened there, but the drama with Shane Pinto. And then the season starts and they're 500 through two months, which was certainly a kick to the nads for them. Disappointing, to say the least. A disappointing return on the trade deadline with Tarasenko, amongst a lack of other substantial moves. Uh, I, I think most of us can agree on that one. And then they were just waddling towards the finish of the season. They won a couple games near the end. They can get some false hope over that. And maybe next year they're the new Canucks and they make a big jump. I doubt it, but we'll see what happens. No one's happy in Ottawa. And that, that way, that makes me pretty happy, honestly. I'm a hater. God, I'm a hater. They stink. They rank near the bottom of the league in basically everything other than their goals per game, which is 20th, so... If you don't consider that near the bottom of the league, good for them, I guess. But throw all that out, because this is the last game of the season, and nobody knows what we're really going to get, and neither team, I don't know, really understands what they're doing out there at this point, particularly the Bruins. Let's talk about the Bruins. The lines, Heinen, Zaka, Pasternak, Marshan, Coyle, DeBrusque, those six might as well have not played the first 40 minutes. JVR, Geeky, Frederick, Lauko, Boquist, Megna. Grizz, Mack, Lindholm, Peak, Wotherspoon, Shattenkirk, Olmark. Magna gets his first as a Bruin, 34-year-old, busted his ass in Providence this year with 51 points in 67 games. It's a nice nod to him. The I already mentioned Carlo is taking a maintenance day, but he will be ready for Saturday, according to Monty. We do not have the cap room, or cap wiggle room, I should say, to play a bunch of rookies in this game. We didn't have that opportunity, so we had to play most of our guys, which again, half speed. That's why you got what you got. Does anyone remember the last couple of games of last season where we were trying to break records? I think that stuck with the team. Because injuries and issues came from those last couple of games. And it affected us, I think, in the first round. Which we famously lost. He. But let's talk about this game, shall we? Puck drops! 551 in. Marshan's going to go for interference. Trying to recover the puck after he mishandled the puck in the Ozone. His handling is just atrocious right now. I don't know what we're gonna what's gonna come out from that, but it is not good. We kill that penalty. And through the first 13 minutes of this game, the Bruins are getting shot, out, outshot eight to two with Omark having to save two 1v1s, basically breakaways, but we basically just parted the C's in the defensive zone, allowing them to go in on him. So it's not really a breakaway. And then of course, a 2v1, all challenging saves, all too easy for the Viking. He was really good for the most part tonight. 417 left. Marshand is going to go for tripping after going low on Grieg for no reason in an open ice hit. Like, sticks his leg right out. That's just a dangerous play. We're going to go to penalty kill. We kill it. After the first period, shots are 11 to 3. We took three shots. Boring, boring hockey. And guess what? The players were probably bored too. I don't even feel bad saying that because they did not give a crap. Second period starts midway through. After 30 minutes of hockey, the Bruins have six shots on net. For those of you who are still watching, kudos. I'm right there with you. The Sens are in transition. Brandstrom cuts across the right side of the blue line and quickly turns into the top of the slot. The defense has to contain that so they move accordingly. That opens up a little bit of space for Smeckle. I have no idea how to say this guy's name. Jack said it 30 times, and I can't repeat it. I don't know why. Smegel. Smeckle. That can't be a real name. That's hilarious. 
That's hilarious. Either way, he's going to get the puck on the left circle from a beautiful pass. Olmark comes across, but looks like he kind of loses his footing and slides a bit too far. Smedgel, Smedgel, Smedgel. He fires low, and it just squeaks through just far enough over the red line to be a goal. It is 1-0 just like that. And less than a minute later, 59 seconds later, I should be specific, it's a 3-on-2 after a coil turnover in the Ozone, and this is a simple play. It's Kachuk over the center of the blue line. Quick pass to the right where Batherson is. He knows that he can slow up just a little bit. Kachuk's going to rush the net, open some passing lanes across the top of the slot because the defense has to respect Kachuk. They do exactly that. That pass goes to the left for Chikrin. Lane is open, and he's just going to fire this low once again on Olmark, who again isn't in the right position. He's sliding across. Looks like he loses his footing a little bit. Very weird. He had been so good through this game other than these two shots. It was just really weird horizontal movement for him. If there's a goalkeeper in the comments, what did you see there? Because I didn't see what I typically see there. It's 2-0. We're going to go to the third period. You'll notice that after five periods of hockey, because last game we didn't get a single power play, and through two periods, we didn't get a single power play. And guess what? If you are playing half speed... In the National Hockey League, it's extremely difficult to draw a power play. Third period starts. And the team's engaged, which actually kind of pissed me off a little more. <laughs> I was like, come on, just whatever. Just let it go. Like, what are we doing? Now we're going to risk getting hurt? Eh. Midway through the third, the Bruins have the puck. They've gotten way more engaged. They're going to fire in on Forsberg, but Chikrin makes the block. It hits him in an awkward spot. He's going to need help down the tunnel. Just more bad news for the Senators. Just not fun for them. 7.57 left. Pinto is going to go for holding. We're going to the power play, and Shattenkirk does the one thing that McAvoy refuses to do. 40 seconds into the power play, Shattenkirk's up at the very top of the high slot, and he fires. He shoots the puck, and he shoots it low. And Forsberg makes the save through a screen. It bounces directly back up the slot for, Z slot. Slot for Zaka. He's going to collect... Forsberg, because of the screen, can't see Zaka move over to his right and flip it past the pad, and it's 2-1 on a power play goal. Off the schneid in that regard. Big wins. Maybe we make a game out of it. 6.31 left. Freddy and Smeckle. Smedgekel. Smedgel. Uh, they're going to get called for roughing. They're going to go 4v4 for two minutes. The 4v4 is good for the Bruins, but we can't get anything by. As the 4v4 expires, we even have a nice little dipsy doodle by McAvoy. He has a give and go with DeBrusque. And McAvoy's going to get to the back door. is going to chuck it to him. And somehow Forsberg gets a pad there. Makes a save. That was a... Jeez, 98% of the time, that's a goal. What a save. What a save. 331 left. A Pinto for hooking. We're going to go to the power play once again. With 30 seconds left of that power play, which the power play once again looked pretty good. Forsberg's playing out of his mind. Olmark is pulled. I saw some criticisms about this. I get it. You want to go 6 on 4. 30 seconds feels like a good amount of time to do it. I totally get it. The Seds immediately clear it on the pickup by Pasta in the neutral zone. He chucks a softy directly across the center of the neutral zone. Where Zub goes, okay, thanks, and just grabs it and throws it into the empty net from about 100 feet away. That was a weird play. And it's 3-1, and that's your final. No injuries. That's a game no. No injuries. I'm okay. I'm okay. We get Toronto, fine. No injuries, though. Carlo's going to be back, depending on how you feel about Forbort. Forbort's back. Peak still looks good. Sh Shattenkirk, there's an argument to have him in the lineup just because of the power play. There's some decisions to be made. And we're going to, in the preview, I'm going to guess at what the lines are going to be game one. We'll see what happens. The other game notes, the... <sighs> them doing this twice in a row really does tell me they just didn't care. I, I just can't imagine putting it any other way. They, they did not care who they played. And I think that's okay. It really doesn't bother me. A lot of you guys who messaged me talked about um, bad traits, bad habits. If if you've been building habits for 80 games and the last two games take you out of it, I, I don't think you ever had them. And for those who are like, hey, it's hard to flip the switch, I don't, I don't think they've been coasting for weeks. They didn't really show up for the last two games. I don't think they have to flip a switch so much. Right? I, I think that's different. I think if you're coasting for the last six weeks of the season, I think that's more of a flip the switch. 
right? If you want to talk about the power play, even though they scored tonight, or well, are they going to flip the switch and suddenly be good in the playoffs? Like, yeah, that's where I'm like, I don't know if you can just flip the switch like that. These two games, I don't feel like the flip was just switched off. I just feel they didn't show up for those ones. I, I, it's, it's hard to explain for me, but I just can't put that much stock in this. I really can't. Maybe that's just me being optimistic. I don't know. But I'm excited for playoff hockey. We're finally here. God, another regular season in the books. And we knew we were in the playoffs for weeks now. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm nervous. I'm not going to have fun because hockey isn't fun. It's stressful and awful and really, really fun. So go bees. Go bees! And once again, it's time to give shout outs to those who are keeping the lights on for this channel. We got to shout out our top line tier to start. Let's start with Erica Pulley, Colin Nolan, The Bugman, Brock Nope, Han Slomo, Coach D, the Atomic Lizard, Bradley Johnson, Aaron Adams, just Aaron, Darren Woodbury, Brett Arney, Pinsent, and Nick Zatrulo. You guys and gals are absolute studs. But we can't mention the studs without mentioning the Stallions, our all-star tier high-quality inspectors, John Kirk, Jacob Pratt, Heil E. Coyote, Adam Ella, Bruin Smash, Joel, Abraxion, De Kingery, The Only Newts, A Tasty Snack, Dutes42, and Jeremy. I can't say thank you enough. I appreciate all the support. Your absolute legends, stallions, whatever great adjective we can work in here. Thank you, everyone, from the depths of my heart, and go bees!